Hello everybody, welcome back to my YouTube channel. My name is Robbie and today I want to show you how to make this. thing I actually did was I got my camera and then I filmed my table so this is like the raw footage remember to like subscribe and follow me on Instagram Twitter Facebook I also have a patreon account for everybody who wants to help out I appreciate it big time well let's jump right in all right so first thing I did was I dragged my footage into After Effects and you see I have my footage here uh, I've reduced my quality so I'll just reduce it here uh, so my computer can actually adjust a bit so what you do is when you're here you right click on your footage and then you say track camera so wait for this process sometimes it takes a bit longer all right so once this is done what you do is you save your project first All right, so what you want to do next here is while selecting this camera tracker, you actually have to look for points like these, say like this, I like this. So I can click on this. So as you can see, it can actually, it will actually select three points. So what I would do here is I'll right click on this and I'll say create now and camera. So it has created a now and the camera here, as you can see. And what I want to do is first is I'll select my now object. So all I have to do at this point is select my camera of oh, my now and my camera and then come up here on file and say export then send selected layer to Lightwave. All right, so we are in Lightwave. So what I'll do first of all is I'll push F3 on the keyboard so that I can have four views and I can actually see things easily. So what has happened here simply is, let me go to about 530 frames. What, what has simply happened is that all those keyframes on how the camera was actually moving, they have actually come into Lightwave. It has sent that information into the camera that's in Lightwave. So, as you can see, the camera shakes if I actually scroll around here. Following the exact settings, so even when you go to the properties, you actually notice that even the settings have changed to follow the settings of that that were in uh, After Effects. So what I want to do here is I'll grab my object. Um, let's say load object. I'll get my iPhone. So it's already here, but how do I know exactly where to place it? So this is actually how I actually did that. So you go to surface editor and then here, so these are the images that have come with the iPhone. But what I want to do is I want to load another image. So I'll go to, what I did was actually made an image sequence. So in After Effects, what you can do is you come here and export. You can actually export. And then once you export here, you just say, okay, these settings are okay. And for the lossless, that's where you change to JPEG sequence. And then you name it to where you want the footage to go to. And to create a folder of images, a sequence. So I did that and uh, where is this? And <clears throat> iPhone JPEG sequence so you just select the first one and then you say okay then once you select this your image type you actually change this to uh, sequence and then you also change this the default the color spacing to linear and linear we are done here and I'll go to backdrop so in backdrop I'll go to composition and I'll actually say backdrop and I'll choose my sequence 
so as you can see it's now showing on my screen which makes things easier so what we'll do is I want to rotate my phone now so I'll rotate this say 90 degrees you can just write in values in here and I also want to change the scale of this because it looks really tiny down there so I'll change the scale to something like 4 4 4 that's big enough and I want to rotate this thing so I can rotate it following the lines that are here of the table and let me just move it up a bit so that it stays on the line all right so here I can just position it from the top view say like that and another thing I want to do is add a base ground on it so that it doesn't look like it's just floating I want the shadow to show as well so what I'll do is I'll go to model and geometry and then say cube so here I'll say save object so it will save the object exactly where I saved the other uh, objects say okay and then here I'll just push H on the keyboard to stretch it and then I'll stretch it don't want to make it too big even just that is okay just that is okay so and I'll push space so what I'll do is I'll go to the surface editor because right now if I change this to VPR mode I'll be able to see this base down here so what I want is I don't want to be seeing the base I only want it to be catching shadows so first of all I'll actually remove the specular say zero increase a bit of some roughness there and some surface just increase it a bit shading and here where it's saying shading model I'll change this to shadow catcher and voila there we go all right so as you can see we're already seeing good results here so the light here actually can show you where the shadows are going so you can actually choose where you want your shadows to be showing let me just rotate this I want to follow where the shadow is moving looking at looking at this shadow here that's on the keyboard I actually I can determine where my shadow will probably be okay that's okay for me and the other thing I want to do is as you can see the color is a bit off so what I what I actually did like for the previous one was I went back to backdrop so here in backdrop what I want to do is uh, add environment I'll add the texture environment and then here in the texture environment I'll click on the Y for starters and on the texture I'll actually take this and here I'll make sure it's on the Y and projection image I also choose the sequence then I'll say cancel that and i'll cancel this again so as you can see it's following the colors that are already here on the the actual footage but this actually works better with um uh, an environment light so we'll go back to item and we want to create an environment light so i'll just name this environment and say okay so as you can see things have already changed just by clicking okay so i come to my camera or i come to my light select the light and then properties so here you can change a few things as you can see the table is burning a bit so i think i need a bit more of that light i can actually put it on two i think that's okay and light color i'll choose one that's a bit yellowish and say okay and i think that's it so what i'll just change a bit here is um 
if I go to surface, I go to the phone screen, and then I go back to the material. I can actually change a couple of things here, say like the glossiness, you can actually change it to 10, and I already changed some of this stuff. So depending on the item that you have, because you need a bit of that specular, you know, the realism a bit, we need that. So, well, once we are here, the next thing is to render this thing. Say you like it the way it is. Because uh, keep in mind, you can also color grade even in After Effects, after you're done. So what you do is you come to Render. All right, so on the Rendering tab, so you remove this, you choose your own path here. So you can choose where you want your stuff to go. You just create a folder and say, okay. And then once you're done with that here, I noticed um, I want these to be PNG files so that I can actually add them, place them on top of the other file. So actually choose these. And after this, I come to my camera properties so you can change this sample maximum sample so one thing i've noticed that actually works better is you put a divisible number say for example if i put um if i put 20 here then here i can just put 40 that works so depending on how big your machine is keep in mind the bigger the number here the longer the render takes That's it for today please remember to like subscribe follow me on instagram twitter and on facebook i actually use more facebook actually yeah i'm mostly there so well bye bye